a new way to look at gases. A gas is made up of atoms and molecules, groups of atoms bound together. The pressure exerted by gas must surely be related to the steady drumbeat of its molecules on the walls of its container. The ability of a gas to take on the volume of its container must surely be due to the freedom of motion of its molecules. And the temperature and internal energy of a gas must surely be related to the kinetic energy of its molecules. We call this molecular approach the kinetic theory of gases. This is the subject of this chapter. Our dear gases, of Gadro's number. The mole is one of the seven metric system base units and is defined as follows. One mole is the number of atoms in the 12 gram sample of carbon 12. Just how many atoms or molecules are there in a mole? The answer is determined experimentally. The number of Avogadro is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 per mole. This number is called Avogadro's number. Avogadro suggests that all gases contain the same numbers of molecules or atoms when they occupy the same volume under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. The number of moles n contained in a sample of any substance can be found from n over n a, in which n is the number of molecules in the sample. The number of the molecule in the sample can also be found from the mass m of the sample, and either the molar mass m, the mass of one mole of that substance, or the mass m of one molecule and equal to mass of sample divided by molar mass m. Molar mass means the mass of one more of that substance. Summarize n equal to numbers of molecules in a sample divided by Avogadro's number or equal to the mass of the sample divided by molar mass of this substance. Brownian motion provides direct evidence of the existence of atoms and molecules using nothing more complicated than an ordinary microscope. We'll fill this small chamber with smoke particles from a match, then watch the particles under a magnification of 100 times. Notice the random jiggling motion of the smoke particles caused by air molecules colliding with the much larger particles of smoke. We'll use these small spheres moving in a frame to simulate Brownian motion. The spheres represent molecules of a gas in random motion. When we add a larger disk to the frame to simulate a large smoke particle in the gas, the disk is jostled side to side, just as a smoke particle is jostled by the motion of the smaller molecules in a surrounding gas. Ideal gases. At low enough density, all gases tend to obey the relation PV equals NRT. This is ideal gas law where in which P is the absolute not gauge pressure. Uh, gauge pressure we learned before is the absolute pressure minus the atmosphere pressure. Okay, And this is the absolute pressure. N is a number of more a gas present. The temperature T must be expressed in Kelvin, not in Celsius. And R, we call it the gas constant, has the same volume of, for all gases, namely 8.31 to 
jaw for more per cavern. PV equals NRT. This is the idea gas law. Provide the gas density is reasonably low. The above formula holds for all types of gas or a mixture of different types, with N being the total number of the moles present. Although there's no such thing in nature as a truly ideal gas, all gases approached ideal state at the low enough densities, that is, under the conditions in which their molecules are far enough apart. Thus, the ideal gas concept allows us to gain useful insights into the limiting behavior of real gases. Look at this picture, okay? A one molecule hit, change direction and speed, until next hit, change speed and then direction, another hit, okay? Uh, and so on, okay? okay? What is ideal gas? Ideal gas means lambda much larger than air, much larger than R. What is lambda? Uh, lambda is the mean distance between two collision or average distance between two collision. This uh, longer and have shorter and the longer so on. So this is average. Air is the distance between particles. Now this looks like in this picture like around this one is the, uh, the distance between particles. And R is the interaction range of molecules. Uh, usually you touch together, you have interaction the distance about uh, two r is about diameter of the uh, molecule or atoms. Uh, you satisfy this condition, this is called ideal gas. That means the density low enough. They obey the law P V equals N R T. If we introduce Boltzmann constant K, it's called a Boltzmann constant K. K defined by R of Na. R is gas constant, 8.31 for all gases. And this is Avogadro number, is constant. So we'll put this number inside. Uh, we get the K, about 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joule per kevin. Now, we look at this NR. This R equal to K and A. Okay, so NR, we can put this, N is then over Avogadro number, R is KN. And so we operate this one, NA cancel out, so NR equal to NK. Okay, and we put this in our this one. So we get PV equal to NRT equal to KNT. In other words, PV equal to KNT. This red one is equivalent to the blue one. If we look at this idea gas a different point of view. This is from the whole sample. This is from a single molecular and atoms point of view. This syringe is connected to a pressure gauge. We'll use this apparatus to demonstrate the relationship between pressure and volume for a gas such as air. The total volume of the air in the syringe and gauge can be read on the scale at the side. We'll start with a 20 cubic centimeter volume of air at normal atmospheric pressure, about 14.7 pounds per square inch. When the volume is decreased to 10 cc's, the pressure increases to about 29 pounds per square inch. If the volume is instead increased to 40 cc's, the pressure drops to about seven pounds per square inch. We'll use this pressure gauge connected to a hollow copper sphere to demonstrate how the pressure of a gas varies with temperature. With the air in the sphere at room temperature, 21 degrees Celsius, the pressure is about 14.2 pounds per square inch. When we dip the sphere in ice water to reduce its temperature to zero degrees Celsius, 
the pressure decreases to 13 pounds per square inch. Dipping the sphere in boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius increases the pressure to 17.5 pounds per square inch. If we mark these three points on a graph of pressure versus temperature, they appear to lie in a line. Extrapolating that line backwards indicates that the pressure of the gas would reach zero at approximately minus 270 degrees centigrade. Work done by an idea gas at constant temperature. And remember, this is the condition, at constant temperature. We look at this PV diagram. We have three lines. They are isothermal line with this all these uh, PV satisfy the temperature is constant. This is 320K, 310K from C. And initial state for I along this one of a curve to F, this process we call constant temperature. This process we call isothermal process. Okay. The isothermal process you have feature. The work done by definition is the PDV integration from VI to V final. And at constant, P is always obey the idea gas law, NRT over V, PV with NRT, DV integration, VI to V final. Now, the condition is constant temperature, T. So T and R are constant, we take out of the integration now. Integration. You get the DV over T, at the VI to V final. Now this integration is very easy, it's log of V. So we put the V final V and R, we get it. Work done by an ideal gas at constant temperature, W equal to NRT, or log of VI, V final, V over V initial. Okay. Now let's calculate the work done by an ideal gas. Uh, the starting from the definition, W equal to PDV. At constant volume, V does not change. So dV is zero, but W equal to zero. At constant pressure, this P is constant. We can take it out. This integration derivative, you get a delta V. So we get P V final over minus V initial, with the P delta V. And work done by ideal gas at constant temperature, which have just long W equal to NRT log of V final over V initial. Different process, a different number. Sample. A cylinder contains 12 liter of oxygen at a 20 degree of Celsius and 15 atmosphere pressure. The temperature is raised to 35 degrees Celsius, and the volume is reduced to 8.5 liters. What is the final pressure of gas in atmospheres? Assuming that the gas is ideal. Uh, this is very straightforward. Uh, we know initial volume, initial temperature, initial pressure. And final temperature, final volume, we want to find the final pressure. So we know PV equal over T equal to NR. So PI, VI, TI over TI equal to NR, NRT. And also P final, V final over T final equal to NR. This is the constant. Uh, we know everything in six number, one, two, three, four, five, we can find another one. Only thing we have to pay attention is the temperature. It should be in Kelvin. So we see Ti equal 20 plus 233 Kelvin. T final is 35 plus 233 Kelvin, which we see. We put this number, we get the P final uh, very easily. Uh, it's about 22 atmosphere. Sample. One more of oxygen. Assume it to be an ideal gas. Expand at constant temperature, 310K. 
from the initial state vi 12 liter to final state v final 19 liter how much work is done by the gas during the expansion uh, we know this is the area is the number is the, uh, how much the work done uh, this is isothermal process okay so we know work done we have a valuable formula okay this is everything is valuable uh, valuable so very easy we put the number inside we get a number okay pressure temperature and the room mean square speed here is our first kinetic theory problem we have a box with six uh, surface of wall, okay, sheet wall. This box in cube is a, in the shape of a cubical box. Inside, we have n number of molecules. Let n moles of the unideal gas be confined in the cubical box of volume V, the length of air, V equal to air cubic. The walls of box are had a temperature T, so temperature is constant T. Okay. What is the connection between the pressure P exerted by the gas on the walls and the speed of the molecules? Now we analyze the pressure by definition is F over A. The, the force is only related to X. Uh, we take this uh, surface is parallel to y o z so f y f c are parallel to the first you never hit this one okay only related to the fx of the uh, fx what is fx fx comes from where it comes from the hitting uh, drum beat hitting of the molecule that's what right look at the fx all together is we have one, two, three, four, five until the total number. And I've got a number. This is a total number in this in this box, right? So we put this on the one, two, three, four together. That's the total force. Okay? The area is R square. Okay? Now now we study this. Where is Fx single angular? Where the force come from? When it hit, it is a collision. We call it, it is an elastic collision. Compared to the mass of the wall, the mass of molecule is very small. So we know that before, the result is returned back with the same speed. This is what we learned previous chapter. Okay. So the, the force acting on the wall by the number I molecule is the Delta P I X of delta T. Okay, when you hit, you have a momentum change uh, during that T. Okay. Now, what the delta P when you hit the infinity wall, we're gonna turn around with the same speed. Uh, so, suppose the speed is V, and up hit is also minus V. So delta P equal to, by definition, the two m V. X. This is number I. Is X. This is number I. V X. Okay. What are delta T? Very hard to treat it, the hitting time. Then we estimate it. this word from hit here, go hit there, come back, come back, back up. So every time interval is it goes air, come back air to air over V. This one we estimate okay is delta T. After delta t, it hit, 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 hit. Okay, so it goes one air, two air divided by velocity uh, x. Ah, this is a, a very important uh, module. Okay. Uh, delta p equal to two m v i x. Delta t equal to two m o v x a. One delta t, one delta t. Okay, we put it one inside, and we see. Vix squared, two cancel out of air. We put Fix inside. So this Fix 
the I can be one, two, three, four, until this one, N and A. And this is heaven. You have air plus air squared air cubic. The air cubic is V. Uh, this M is constant, the mass of one molecule. I take it out. So we finally get this answer. Now we do some thing to to explain this first, please. Okay. This is a V square. One X square, two X V X square, F three square until N. Now if we divide it total number, I put it here, all right? This become an average V square. And here we exchanged N and M. We get M and T L. N, this one, okay? This is a, we know this one, it is. this V X square, you have one, two, three, four, three. it divided by the total number. So this is the average, okay, average. And look at this one. This is Avogadro number, this is a mass of one molecule. So this is equal to the one more molecule, okay? Uh, so we rewrite this equation to N molar mass, because this is number one molar, you have this number, Avogadro number. Each one have mass M, so the total is molar mass. This is a cubic L, is the volume. And this is the VX average, square average. This is the red one. Okay, this is VX square. You have one, two, three, four, five, and divided by total number. So this is VX square. And we, by definition, which this one is called the V root mean square square. Ah, and this one, VX square. Is one over three v square average. I will prove it later. Okay, and then we put this one. You get in uh, three v or the v v square average equal to v root mean square square. Okay, and m equal to n m is the molar mass air cubic is the volume. And we see, we define V square, mean square equal to three. What do we do? Now, let me take the square root on both sides. Both sides is squared root mean square. So this velocity is root mean square. And you take the square root, you take out. So this V root mean square. See the definition? Yeah. I remember that, okay? And this one, v square equal to vx square plus vy square plus vz square. And by symmetry, you the average x, y, z are symmetry, okay? So each one is equal, is much equal. So this three v root mean square equal to three vx square or to three vy square average equal to uh, 3vz square average. So vx square of equal to v room square over 3. Over, over three. Okay, so there's the b, that's the answer. That's the answer. Then we find v room square. v room square, by definition, uh, you take the square root on both sides, on, on the left side, you get v root mean square. Here you see root mean square. Okay. For ideal gas, we know PV equal to NRT. Also we have our calculation result. Uh, let me see. Let me compile these two. PV equal to NRT. We put this one here. Then we get v root mean square equal to 3 RT over M. Uh, this is how we do that. And from this we learn V root mean square is nothing to do with P pressure and V volume and is only related to temperature T and molar mass. Uh, all the gases have the same this formula. Uh, different mass have different molar mass. Okay. 
the road mean square speed, v road mean square of the molecule of gas is closer relative, relate to the speed of sound in that gas, uh, sound speed relate to this one. Okay. We'll use this molecular motion demonstrator to simulate the increase in pressure of a sample of gas when its volume is decreased. The motion of the spheres in the frame corresponds to the motion of the gas molecules. The pressure on the side of the frame caused by spheres striking the frame simulates the pressure of a gas on the walls of its container. When we decrease the volume inside the frame, the spheres strike the frame more frequently and at higher speeds, simulating the increase of pressure in a gas when the volume is reduced. We'll use this glass tube containing glass chips floating in a small amount of mercury to demonstrate kinetic theory. When the mercury is heated over a gas flame, the mercury boils rapidly. The energetic mercury vapor pushes some of the glass chips up into the air where they dance vigorously. We'll use this molecular motion simulator to show the free expansion of a gas into a vacuum. At first, the balls are moving in only half the frame. When we remove the center barrier, the balls expand freely to the other half of the frame. Transmission of kinetic energy. For a single molecule of an ideal gas, we know K equal to half mv squared. But the molecules are hit with other people and you change the speed. Okay? So we need what you need, the average. And this v square average, we know what is it, okay? Uh, this we just calculate, okay? Is e, by definition, it's v rooms, root mean square, square, okay? And this number we have already said equal to 3rt over m. So we combine this one, m and m, okay? This is molar mass, this is as mass of single molar. So this should be the number of the molecular. Okay? Ah, this is this is the I've got a number because this is a molar mass, the divided mass equal to number. Okay? And we know R O N is defined by both my constant. So this equal to two thirds K T. Ah, K T. And we rewrite it as three times half K T. Oh, you should look at it. This is very interesting. You see, at a given temperature T, all ideal gas molecules, no matter what their mass, have the same average translational kinetic energy. K bar equal to three, half KT. Why we take three out? Because for a single molecule, it has three freedom moving along x, along y, along z. Uh, each freedom uh, distribute half kT energy, the three. And later we'll find you have a more freedom, you have a more kinetic energy. When we measure the temperature of a gas, we also measure the average traditional kinetic energy of its molecule. This applies to any objects, uh, any gas. So if you have a uh, smaller m, then velocity must be due because the same. Uh, the m is smaller, v must be bigger. 